What's that, lads? The Germans got a new top tier plane? Well, technically, I've already covered this plane before in this Soviet tech tree. But what the hell, may as well make another video on it. This plane technically isn't the same, however. This is the MiG-23 MLA, not the Soviet MLD. The TLDR on this plane, at least when it comes to the differences between the Soviet one, is that the German plane doesn't have leading edge swing slats. This gives it slightly less angle of attack. You can't really pull as high G in a turn as you would with the Soviet version. But this plane, the MLA, actually has less drag, so you have a slightly better continuous turn rate. For what it's worth, however, they play practically the same. They've got the same engine, which we'll cover shortly. It's basically just a German copy that has been slightly changed to make it look like a new edition. Gaijin once again doing the absolute minimum amount of work. But anyway, with the German tech tree already having the F4F Phantom, is the new MiG-23 MLA the best yet in the German tech tree? Well, I think we already know the answer to that, but let's get into the video anyway. This East German rocket is a Rank 7 battery-rating 11.3 jet fighter, located obviously in the German tech tree, after the MiG-21 base. To unlock it, you'll have to grind out 400,000 research points before unlocking the vehicle for 1,080,000 silver lions. To put this point in our lineup, it's going to cost you 310,000 silver lions, and for the expert in ace qualifications, it's 1,080,000 silver lions and 3,200 golden eagles. In terms of customization, there are currently no skins available for this play, but its space camouflage is pretty cool. And you know what else is pretty cool? It's got variable wings, bro. This allows you to change the variable wings mid-flight. Having the wings further forward at slow speeds to improve agility, and having the wings swept back to high speeds to reduce drag, allowing for a much higher top speed. This isn't a new feature, as it is obviously the same as the MiG-23 MLD, but it does give the Germans their first high speed, highly agile plane. This means you can play this jet in several ways and still be very effective. However, with all top tier jets currently in War Thunder, it's better to stay at a medium altitude and very fast, firing infrared or semi-active radar homing missiles at unaware enemies. But we'll get to that shortly. Anyway, the MLA is powered by the Tomansky R-35-300 engine, the same engine that's found on the MLD in the Soviet tech tree. 10 kilograms of thrust at military power, which rises to 10,320 kilograms of thrust when afterburning. This gives the German plane practically the same amount of thrust and acceleration as the Soviet plane well famed for its high power output. In fact, with clean wings, the MiG-23 MLA has a climb rate of 219.6 meters per second, which is very impressive for such a large aircraft. The plane is also very fast at practically all altitudes. And while this certainly is good for running away and for evading incoming missiles, it can be a problem if you go into a merge. This is because the MiG-23 MLA, like the MLD, struggles to bleed excess speed this means it's hard to reverse an enemy while playing this jet, as even when air braking and with your wings fully forward, you do have very good energy retention. This is kind of swings and roundabouts, because in a sustained turn rate this is a good thing, but in a reversal it's a very bad thing, because enemies can bleed speed better than you and then get on your 6. So if you go into a merge with an enemy that has a similar energy level to you, it's better to energy fight them compared to a simple turn fight them. But speaking of fighting, let's get on to the weaponry. And because this is a top tier jet, we obviously have to start with the radar, which is actually useful on this plane. This is the Sapphire 23 MLA. It has both radar and IRST, or infrared search and track, as well as a look down shoot down mode, IFF, BVR, and ACM. However, it does not have a pulse Doppler mode. Well, this isn't the end of the world. Anyway, the stock weapon of the MiG-23 is the 23mm GSH-23L cannon, a common gun for all of the post-war Soviet aircraft. The gun has a high rate of fire, but a very low muzzle velocity, making it rather hard to use at the high speeds at top tier. However, if you do manage to get the rounds to connect, however, the guns are very powerful and will rip an enemy to pieces. So again, kind of like swings and roundabouts. We can also carry these same guns in gun pods under the wings. However, these are very draggy, so I wouldn't recommend carrying them. We then have an assortment of air-to-ground weaponry, but because this vehicle is an interceptor, I can't really recommend air-to-ground combat with this thing. You have better options in the SU-22. Anyway, first of all, we have the S-5K rockets. These can penetrate 150mm of armour and carry a TNT warhead containing 570 grams of TNT. These are the famously bad Soviet rockets, which are horribly inaccurate. Things improve though with the SHKOs. 
These penetrate much more with 420mm of armour and have a larger warhead containing 1.69 kilos of TNT. If you are going to use rockets with this plane, I'd strongly recommend the SHKOs. We do have one final rocket however, the S24Bs. These are much, much larger, with a pure high explosive warhead containing 25.5 kilos of TNT. This gives them a constant 80mm of penetration, meaning they will one hit kill pretty much every main battle tank in War Thunder. However, due to their size, you can only carry a maximum of 4 of them, making it a rather inefficient payload. We then have a selection of dumb bombs, which you all know what dumb bombs do, you just drop them and they explode. We have 3 different types available, a 100 kilo bomb, a 250 kilo bomb, and a 500 kilo bomb. As usual, the heavier the bomb you carry, the fewer you can carry along with them. But again, seeing that this is a supersonic jet fighter, you don't really want to be getting slow in this thing, as it leaves you incredibly vulnerable to air defence systems. We then have the KH-23 rockets. These are manual command line of sight, basically you need to use your keyboard to guide them, the WASD keys. They are very effective if you manage to hit an opponent with these things, but it does leave you very vulnerable once again like the rockets. And again, frankly, there are much better ground attack options in the German tech tree, notably the new SU-22, as well as the good old G-91. And finally, we come on to the Ertwer missiles. And our stock missiles are the R-13Ms. These are rear aspect and have a maximum overload of 20 Gs. These are pretty decent, but at top tier they're a little bit underwhelming. Things greatly improve with the R-60 IR missiles. These are much more agile, being able to pull 30 Gs. They are also rear aspect locked only missiles, but have a shorter range of 5 kilometers compared to the 5.5 of the R-13Ms. This is one of the key weaknesses of the R-60 missile, they are quite short range, and they are also very susceptible to flaring, which makes them very easy to counter. So it's worth noting, these are not the R-60M missiles found on the other MiG variants, so you cannot fire them in a head-on approach. This isn't too bad however, and they are still more than usable at top tier. We then come on to the big boys, the R-23 and the R-24s. Both of these missiles have both IR and semi-active radar homing variants. Due to my playstyle, I don't typically use FOX-1 missiles, so we're going to be looking at the IR versions, but the infrared and the semi-active radar homing missiles share the exact same stats. Anyway, our first massive missile is the R-23. Like the R-13Ms, they have a maximum overload of 20 Gs and have a launch range of 27 kilometers. They have a TNT warhead of 20.8 kilos, which makes them a one-hit kill, even against something massive like a TU-8. Needless to say, more than enough for your common fighter at top tier. We then have the R-24, which was the follow-on model to the R-23. These share the same TNT warhead of 20.8 kilos, but now have a 24G maximum overload, and a launch range of 50 kilometers. As I said, both the R-23 and the R-24 have both IR and semi-active radar homing variants, making them very flexible. As I said, I use the infrared guided versions, I tend to fire them off at the start of a game just to get rid of them, and you can surprisingly get a lot of long range kills with these bad boys. The choice of R23 and R24s, along with the R60 missiles, make the MiG-23 MLA a very lethal combatant in top tier just like the Soviet MLD version. So as we come to the end of this review, it's very hard to argue that with the combination of great firepower, as well as the good flight characteristics, combining high agility and high top speed depending on the wing settings, as well as the fantastic weapons, it is very hard indeed to argue that someone shouldn't grind out this plane. Like I said, this plane is basically just a copy and paste of the Soviet version, and in the Soviet territory, the MLD is probably one of the strongest jets at top tier at the minute, and so is the German MLA. So, should you grind it? Of course, it's probably the strongest jet at top tier at the minute, along with a few others. It's certainly better than the German F4F in my opinion. I had a lot of fun playing this plane, like I said, it is just a MiG-23 MLD, it's just as strong as the Soviet version. So you've played the MiG-23 MLD and you enjoy it, then come and get the MLA, it's just the same plane pretty much. It plays the same, feels the same, kills the same. It's just in a different tech tree, really. I have no issue with it going in the German tech tree. They did use it, after all, in East Germany. There isn't really any national balance in War Thunder anymore. Every game now is pretty much a mixed battle anyway, so it's not like the old days of War Thunder where team composition did matter. I remember when the T2 first got introduced, and it just 
clubbed every single thing. The Japanese win rate was like 90%. Anyway, those days are long gone. War Thunder Ur realistic battles are now Ur realistic arcade battles pretty much. But anyway, if you did enjoy that video, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you really enjoyed it, then please do consider becoming a channel member. Like Daboa LX, Just Someone, Destroy1805, Dr. Bob, Tans, William Tessier, and Lola Alfonte. Thank you very much again, lads, and I'll see you in the next video.